Want to welcome you again to our class, the School of the Word. So thank you for attending. We really are honored when you take time to attend the School of the Word. As we go into the School of the Word, let's just pause in a word of prayer and ask God for His direction and leadership. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we thank you for your word, that your word is true, that your word is forever settled in heaven. As we continue our study of the word and the regions that existed in the Old Testament, in the land of promise, in the land of Canaan, we ask you to give us understanding, and that, Father, these were given as examples to us, that we may be able to learn from them and see those areas that we need to avoid and those areas we need to be able to embrace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and ask. Amen. Welcome once again to the School of the Word. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are tuning in. This is the School of the Word, the place where we get into the Word. We are currently looking at the Old Testament. So that believers can become familiar with what's happened, what happened in the Old Testament, and they can be students of the Word of God, the Word of the Old Testament. Last week we began looking at the religions of the Old Testament. And we did a brief introduction to what religion is and the three areas in our thoughts, in our actions, and in the, our fellowship. They will continue on and begin to look at religions that existed in the land of promise, the land of Canaan that Israel was supposed to go and occupy. We read in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6 which says the Lord has chosen you out of all the people on the earth, on the face of the earth to be his people. God chose Israel to be his people. We read in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 7 where it says turn and resume your journey and go to the hill country of the Amorites and to all their neighbors in the Arab, the, in the hill country, in the lowland, the shepherd, in the Negev, the south country and on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, the land of the Canaanites and Lebanon as far as the river Euphrates, the great river. Here we are told the land Israel was supposed to occupy. Let's, let's look at this. Let's begin. Have you ever read the Old Testament and wondered what a reference such as the Asherah Paul really means? You read, you come across the Asherah Paul. What does it mean? Or for instance, when you read 2 Kings 16, verse 8, verse 3 rather, which says, He followed the ways of the kings of Israel, and even sacrificed his son in the fire, engaging in the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. What's to your mind? When you read such a scripture, he followed the ways of the kings of Israel and even sacrificed his son in the fire, engaging in detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. When God called Israel to occupy the land of Canaan, God commanded them, in the cities of the nations, the Lord is giving you as an inheritance. Do not leave anything that brings. Completely destroy them. The Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Otherwise, they will teach you to follow all the detestable things they do in worshipping their gods. 
for sin against the Lord your God. So when God called them, he told them to destroy all these tribes, all these groups. And why did God give such a commandment? He said, otherwise they will teach you to follow all the detestable things they do in worshipping their gods. And you will sin against the Lord your God. What were these practices? All these people that displeased God so badly that it ordered their total extermination. What were they doing? What goes through your mind? You read in Leviticus 18.21 You shall not let any of your descendants pass through the fire of Molech to Molech. What goes through your mind? Deuteronomy 1.7 tells us the land that Israel was supposed to occupy. The land of Canaan. God even marks out the boundaries where it was going to end. Now, in this land of Canaan that Israel was going to occupy, there were people already existing in the land. Those people had a culture and their religions that they were following. And Israel was given a clear instruction that they were supposed to completely exterminate these people or else the religious practices that these people follow would be a thorn in Israel's side and cause them to practice them and even cause Israel to depart from God. So the people in Canaan, the land of Canaan, worshipped many gods. Some examples of those gods, they worshipped the god El, the creator god. They worshipped the goddess Asherah, the goddess of fertility. They worship the god Baal, the god of storms. They worship the god Dagon, the god of crops. They worship Ashtat. They worship Anat, the queen of heaven. They worship astral deities. They worship the sun god and the moon god and the starry hosts. And they worship the gods of the underworld, the god Mot, the god Molech, the god Rephaim. So the Canaanites worship many gods. There are many gods that they were worshipping. And if you look at the land of Canaan, you see that across the land of Canaan, the land of promise, these gods were being worshipped by the people. So Canaanite culture was a polytheistic type of culture where they worshipped many, many different gods. And so to this kind of environment, the children of Israel entered and found themselves. When God called them, he told them specifically to exterminate all this so that they are, they are not contaminated by the religious practices of these people. Unfortunately, Israel failed. And these people had a lasting impact on the life of the children of Israel. The Old Testament abounds with numerous examples of Israelites following the religious practices of these foreign gods, openly disobeying God and suffering the consequences of their disobedience and their rebellion. Deuteronomy 6 4 says here, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. God introduced himself to Israel as the one true God. And Israel was to be, were to be the worshippers of one true God. In a world of many gods, in a world of polytheism, in a world where the many the people were worshipping many gods, Israel had to enter in with the concept of one God at the expense of all other, all other so-called gods. 
So God was simply saying to Israel, I'm not one of the gods, I'm the only God. So you are entering that land where they worship many gods, gods of wood and stone and metal, but you must realize you only have one true God, Yahweh. So Israel were to be worshippers of the one true God in a world of polytheism. Unfortunately, Israel failed. And Israel began to mix the religions of the land with the religion, the, the worship of one true God, that one true God, a concept known as syncretism. Syncretism is where they take these various religious beliefs and mix them together. They mixed the elements of monotheism, they took monotheism and mixed it up with elements of the religions of the Canaanites. So our study will concentrate on religions that existed in Canaan, the land that was to be occupied. And we said already that the people of Canaan worshipped many gods. They had the god El, the goddess Asherah, the god Baal, the god Dagon, the goddess Ashtet, the goddess Anat, the worships astro deities, the sun god, the moon god, the starry horse, they worshipped gods of the underworld, Mort and Molech and Rephaim, in this kind of world, Israel entered and they find themselves with so many challenges of these various gods. One of the goddesses that was, that, that was worshipped in the land of Canaan was the goddess Asher. In our study, we want to look at two of these. We won't be able to recover all the gods. We say there's El, there was Asherah, there was Baal, there was Dagon, there was Ashtad, there was Anna, there were astral deities, there were underworld deities. But our study we only concentrate on two of these, just to give an understanding. The others can be studied in your private time. One of the goddesses that we find quite prominent in the Old Testament is the goddess Asher. Now, who is Asher? We also come across Asher poles. Have you ever studied the Old Testament and you come across Asher poles and you ask yourself, what are these? Well, let's look at them. So the goddess Asherah and Asherah poles appear in the Bible from the book of Exodus right throughout the book of Micah, which shows that this form of worship and idolatry was a constant problem, a constant thorn in the side of Israel. Let's look at a couple of scriptures. Exodus 34, verse 13 says, break down their altars, smash their stone, sacred stones, and cut down their Asherah poles. Deuteronomy 16, 16, verse 21, says, you must not plant any kind of tree as a sacred Asherah pole near the altar of the Lord your God, which you built for yourself. 1 Kings 16, 33 says Ahab, King Ahab, Ahab also made an Asherah pole and did more to arouse the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, than did all the kings of Israel before him. So by planting Asherah tree, that's Asherah pole, Ahab aroused the anger of the Lord. Judges 6, 25 to 30. We read the story of Gideon. The Bible says, That night the Lord said to him, Take the bull from your father's head, as well as a second bull, one that is seven years old. Pull down your father's bell altar and cut down the nearby Asherah pole. Then build an altar for the Lord your God on top. Build an altar for the Lord your God on top of this stronghold. 
according to the proper pattern. Take the second bull and offer it as a burnt sacrifice on the wood from the ashram pool that you cut down. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did just as the Lord had told him. He was too afraid of his father's family and the men of the city to do it in broad daylight. So he waited until night time. When the men of the city got up the next morning, they saw the bell altar pulled down, the nearby Asherah pole cut down, the second bull sacrificed on the newly built altar. They said to one another, who did this? They investigated the matter thoroughly and concluded that Gideon, the son of Josh, had done it. The men of the city said to Josh, Bring out your son so that we can execute him. He pulled down the bell altar and he cut down the nearby ashen pole. 1 Kings 2 Kings 23, verse 4 to 7. The Bible says, The king ordered Hilkiah the high priest and the priest next in rank and the doorkeepers to remove from the temple of the Lord all the articles made for Baal and Asher and all the starry hosts. He burnt them outside Jerusalem in the fields of the Kidron Valley and took the ashes to Bethel. He did away with the idolatrous priests appointed by the kings of Judah to burn incense on the high places of the towns of Judah and on those around Jerusalem, those who burned incense to Baal, to the sun and the moon, to the constellations and to all the starry hosts. Verse 6, he took the Asherah pole from the temple of the Lord to the Kidron Valley outside Jerusalem and burnt it there. He ground it to powder and scattered the dust over the graves of the common people. Verse 7 says, He also tore down the quarters of the male shrine prostitutes who were in the temple of the Lord and the quarters where the women did weaving for Asher. 2 Kings 21, verse 3 and 7, it says, He rebuilt the high places his father Hezekiah had destroyed. He also erected altars to Baal and made an Asherah pole as Ahab, the king of Israel, had done. He bowed down to all the study hosts and worshipped them. He took the curved Asherah pole he had made and put it in the temple, of which the Lord had said to David and his son Solomon, in this temple and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name. Let's go on one last scripture. Judges 3 7. The sons of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and forgot the Lord their God and served the bars and the Asherahs. So, really, all these scriptures we've looked at, all of them make reference to a worship of or usage of the Asherah Paul. If you study the books of Kings and Chronicles, these books repeatedly tell us stories of one king chopping down the Asherah poles, a new king coming up and rebuilding them up again. King Manasseh of Judah, in 2 Kings 21, rebuilt the high places his father Hezekiah had destroyed. He erected altars to Baal and made an Ashra pole. He took this curved Ashra pole and he put it in the temple of the Lord. He literally installed this Ashra pole in the temple of God. When the righteous King Josiah went out with his great cleansing, we are told in 2 Kings 23 that King Josiah 
went to the temple and took the Asherah pole that Manasseh had put in the temple. He took it out and he bent it and he ground it to powder. Wow. So the Old Testament has a lot to say about the Asherah and the Asherah poles. What is the Asherah? And why was it so famous and so popular among the people? The goddess Asherah was one of the goddesses of Canaan. And the goddess Asherah, from what we have learned, says that it tells us that she was the principal consort or mistress of the principal god of the land, not only of Canaan but of the ancient Near East. And it was known by a number of different names. These pantheons of gods in Babylon was known as the storm god Amuru. In the Ugarites, it was known as El. It was also known as El among the Canaanites. So Asherah was clearly a very popular goddess. Her prominence, prominent appearance in the biblical narratives indicates that the cult of Asherah was a major rival, major problem for the children of Israel and the worship of Yahweh. We find so many examples in scripture in which Asherah poles are erected and worshipped and we find so many examples of condemnation of the practice of these Asherah poles. And we find so many examples in scriptures of these Asherah poles being cut down and burnt. We saw the account of Gideon in Judges 6 and the account of Josiah in 2 Kings 23. So Asherah as a goddess, the goddess of fertility, the chief goddess, the mistress of the chief god El, is represented by in the Bible by sacred poles erected near an altar. When an altar is made to worship, they put a pole near the altar, a pole known as the Asherah pole, a pole in recognition of the goddess Asher. So she was very popular in Canaanite religions, in pagan deviations. Pagan worship. She was a very popular goddess. So this pole stood as a sacred monument and a tribute to the Canaanite goddess Asherah. So this Canaanite goddess Asherah, the mistress of the Canaanite creator god El, was worshipped through these trees that they put up and she was associated with the tree of life. We are told in mythology that she gave birth to 70 other gods in the Canaanite religion. We are told that she was the mother of Ba, and also sometimes we are told she was the mistress of Ba. When Ba overthrew his father, creator God El, and became God, God himself of the Canaanites, Ashna became his mistress again. His own mother became his mistress. In some other places, we begin to see those Israelites who were practicing this Canaanite cult begin to place Asherah together with Yahweh as though she was Yahweh's wife. So who is this Asherah? Judges 3.7 1 Kings 14 and 15, 1 Kings 15 verse 13, and 2 Kings 13, 6 tell us that one common feature of Canaanite worship and of syncretism in Israelites was the erection of Asherah poles. The Asherah poles were set beside every spreading tree, every altar, indicating that these were for Cultic purposes more than just planted trees. And these Asherah poles found their way into Israel's history as a nation rebelled against God. 
Now you saw in Exodus 34 verse 13, God giving Israel an instruction to cut them down. If you read it from Exodus 34, God already gave them instructions to cut it down. It means that these Asherah poles must have made their appearance in any Israelite history. Probably even back to the time of the time they were in the land of Egypt as slaves. So this had quite an effect and an influence upon Israel. We saw in the book of Judges 6 that Gideon, the judge, his father had the stature of Baal, and Gideon's father had an Asherah pole. That's where they worshipped. And Gideon had to break down the altar of Baal, and he had to cut down the Asherah pole and use it as wood for offering the sacrifice unto God. Now, this simply means that the people in the land also worship through the same things, and probably also had their own altars and their own Asherah poles. So it is a common practice. After King Saul, Solomon died, the two kings that took over the ten tribes to the north and the two tribes to the south, Rehoboam and Jeroboam, we are told in 1 Kings 14 that they encouraged Asherah worship. If you go to 1 Kings 18, the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. I've read this story so many times. There's one thing I always missed. I only saw the 450 prophets of Baal. I didn't see that there were other prophets, 400 prophets of Asher. So in this account, Queen Jezebel, who initially came from the land, from the city of Tyre in Phoenicia. Remember Phoenicia on the coast of Israel, up there in the north towards Lebanon, Queen Jezebel from Tyre in Phoenicia became the wife of King Ahab of Israel. <coughs> when she came to Israel to a new home, she brought her own a Tyrian and Phoenician gods, Ver and Asher, as queen in the land. She secured official recognition and status for 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Asher. Queen Jezebel encouraged the worship of these gods, Baal and Asher, in Israel. We saw in Exodus 34 and verse 13. And Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4. In Deuteronomy 6 verse 4, God made it clear that he is one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. In Deuteronomy 34 verse 13, God condemned the worship of Asherah poles and commanded Israel to cut them down. From you go for six four God says there's only one is not part of a group of gods and he condemned the Israelites who engaged in pagan worship. So this is one of the gods that you find in the land of Canaan. So the land of Canaan fell under the umbrella of pagan worship. Gods of a people Israel was supposed to completely exterminate. And any connection between the God of Israel, the true God Yahweh and Asherah is a perversion of truth. God told them to cut it down. As New Testament believers, as modern day believers, we don't live in a bubble. Through social media, our workplaces, our day-to-day -day activities, we observe many non-biblical ideas from the culture around us, just like the Israelites. In the 400 years they were in Egypt, 
they took in so much pagan influence into their thinking that as they went out of the land in Exodus 34, God tells them, break it down, pull down the Ashra post, break them down, cut them down. Deuteronomy 16, verse 21, we are told, you shall not plant for yourself any tree as a wooden image near the altar which you build for yourself to the Lord your God. So God told them as they built altars to God not to set up any wooden Asherah poles of their own. There are many places in scripture, many people who made huge attempts to eradicate Asherah worship. Gideon, Josiah, Asa, many kings tried, many judges tried to wipe it out. But it was such a strong one that it always resurfaced. But how was Asherah worshipped by the people? They had the poles which built Asherah, but how was she worshipped? We know Asherah was the mistress of the greater god of Canaan, El. She was a fertility goddess and she gave birth to many gods, including the powerful god, Baal. She was the god of fertility and across the world she had various names. Archaeologists have found all kinds of representations of Asherah. She's portrayed as a nude female, sometimes pregnant, with exaggerated breasts that she holds out, apparently as symbols of fertility that she promises her followers. Bible indicates that she was worshipped near trees and poles called Ashra worship, Ashra poles, but how was she worshipped? Ashra was worshipped in various ways, including through ritual sex. Although she was believed to be Ba's mother, to, to the, although she was believed to be the, the mother of Ba, she was also his mistress. Later on, Ba overthrew his father El and became the chief god. Ashra became his mistress. Followers of Ashra believed that the sexual union between Ba and Ashra produced fertility. So these worshippers engaged in immoral sex to cause the gods to join together and to ensure good harvests. This practice became the basis for religious prostitution. We saw in the, that there were male prostitutes and the women were weaving for Asher. So the priest or a male member of the community representing Baal and a female or a priestess representing Asher would engage in sexual activity, perverted sexual activity. It's no wonder. God's anger bent against his people and their leaders because of such activities. Second one we see in the land of Israel, in the land of Canaan, the land of promise. Second form of worship was the worship to the God Moloch. In the Old Testament, you're going to come across many references to Moloch. And all scholars agree that reference to Moloch is a reference to a God and not to an idea. Let's show some examples. Leviticus 18.21 You must not give any of your children as an offering to Moloch, so that you do not profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Leviticus 20 verse 2 to 5 You shall also say to the sons of Israel, any man from the sons of Israel or from the aliens sojourning in Israel who gives any of his offspring to Molech shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. I will also set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people. Because he has given some of his offspring to Molech so as to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. If the people of the land, however, should ever disregard that man when he gives any of his offspring to Molech, so as not to put him to death, then I myself 
will set my face against that man and against his family. And I'll cut off among the people, both him and those who play the harlot after him, by playing the harlot after one. And a scripture, Second Chronicles 33, verse 6. He made his sons to pass through the fire in the valley of Bethlehem, and he practiced witchcraft, used divination, practiced sorcery, and dealt with mediums and spirits. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. Jeremiah 7 verse 31, They have built the high places of Topaz, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I did not command, and it did not come into my mind. Deuteronomy 18 verse 10, there shall not be found any among you. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. One uses divination, one practices witchcraft, one interprets omens or a sorcerer. Ezekiel 20, 31. When you offer your gifts, when you cause your sons to pass through the fire, you are defiling yourselves with your idols to this day. And shall I be inquired of you, of by you, O house of Israel? As I live, declares the Lord, I will not be inquired of by you. So you see, there are so many scriptures that make reference to passing through the fire or putting your sons through the fire. What exactly was that? Two views have been forwarded on that. Some people say it was just a dedication in the fire to the god Molech. Others have said it was human sacrifice to the god Molech. Some people say it was a practice of child sacrifice. Others say just a harmless uh, rite of dedication to the, to the cultic, the cultic dedication to Molech. If you study the Old Testament, there's overwhelming evidence that the Old Testament actually implies that children were offered up in fiery human sacrifice to Molech. Where this took place, we are told, was in, at the top of in the valley of Hino, which is in relation to ancient Israel, just outside the city. Now, the word just top of there in the book of Jeremiah, actually is the same word used for stove or fireplace or a pot. So it's actually the incendiary nature of the top of it burns. It was a burning. So Molech is the name of a god in the Old Testament, one of the Canaanite gods. And his mistress was Ashtoreth. So we are told in scripture, Ezekiel, Leviticus 18.21, Leviticus 22-5, Leviticus 18-3, that Molech worship was part of the Canaanite abominations. In Deuteronomy 12.31 and Deuteronomy 18 and 2 Kings 16, the Bible makes reference to human sacrifices. An allusion to the Molech cult, clearly showing that this cult was in Canaan. But how was, was Molech worshipped? Two things human sacrifice. The Bible calls it making your son or daughter to pass through the fire. How did it happen? Couples who sacrificed their firstborn to the god Molech believed that Moloch or Molech would ensure financial prosperity for the family and grant them fair future children. So they did this for prosperity and they did this for growth in their families. Another important aspect of Molech worship was ritual prostitution. So we are told 
They broke down the quarters where the male prostitutes resided and even the quarters where the women weaved garments for Asher. So ritual prostitution was another important form of expression of their worship to mourners. But how was it done? People believe that the idol of Molech was a giant metal stature of a man with a bull's head. The image had holes in the abdomen and it had some outstretched arms that made it look like a ramp. And the priests would put a fire around in the stature and around the stature and then the babies or infants or young children would be taken and placed in the arms of this stature. The fire is burning. So that hot fire inside the stature, the living children will be placed in the arm, outstretched arms of this metal stature. Some people even believe that once this is done, they would beat the drum so loudly to drown out the screams of the infants and the children who have been sacrificed. Now, this is a kind of environment Israel finds itself into. And many places in scripture, God strictly, strictly forbade Israel to practice these to get involved in these practices. And in many places we are told Israel failed. So two of the main gods Israel encountered when they came to the land of Canaan was the god Molech and the goddess Asher. And these two are among those Canaanite pagan deities that had a huge effect on the people of God. And we find so many scriptures in the Old Testament that make reference to these two deities. Asher and the Asherah poles and Molech with the passing through the fire. And thank you for attending our class this morning. We'll see you again in the next class. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comments section on YouTube or Facebook. Please kindly support this channel by clicking the like button and consider sub subscribing to this channel. And please share these videos with others within your contacts. So the other gods that, are, that were there in the land, we'll leave them. It just gives you a bit of a background. You can use an concordance and Bible dictionaries and other resources, just to say the other gods, El, Dagon, Ashtad, Anad, the Queen of Heaven, Mord, the, you know, the, the King of Death, of the underworld, you can study them in your own private time. God bless you. We'll see you again. Um, Pafi, I watched you. How many more sessions you want to record? Well, that I'm passing.